welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Peinecker, and I have a very special guest on. Um, came across his YouTube channel called 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. And I have to tell you, folks, uh, I really love the channel. Uh, I really love the host. Uh, David Boyce, welcome to the program. Hey, th Steve, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. So uh, one of the reasons I was interested in having David come onto the program is because he has this really fascinating project. And it actually stems from a book. Uh, but he has this YouTube channel called 52, Church, 52, week, 52 Churches in 52 Weeks, but he also wrote a book. And so what you're doing is you wrote the book, which was like a blog that became a book. And now mm -hmm. you're kind of redoing it, but this time as a YouTube channel. Does that sound about right? That's exactly it. Yeah. Okay. And it's so cool because you don't really go, you go into it not really knowing anything about the church that you're visiting, which is the exact opposite of me. I know all about these churches because I read all about them and you're, you're actually experiencing them for the first time. And I think that's what's so cool about the, the endeavor that you're doing. So before we get started, um, I, I just want to say, first of all, we're going to talk about your background because you come from a, a Lutheran background. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. And uh, and how would you describe yourself as like non-denominational Christian now? Uh, nowadays, like I kind of term myself as interdenominational. Okay. So, you know, with the non-denominational, you kind of remove all the other denominations. Nowadays, it's kind of like I'm kind of welcoming of as many denominations as I can. Uh, I just feel like it's more welcoming. It's more Christ-like uh, when you take that type of approach. Okay, okay. Um, and that's that's the cool thing about um, what you're doing is you're not trying to proselytize. You're actually trying to learn about these churches. Now, I find that so compelling. Uh, it kind of is in the same spirit of what my channel is all about. Now, before we start about talking about your YouTube channel, and I also want to talk about your, your background as well, let's just talk a little bit about what led you to write the book and ultimately also do the channel. Yeah. So, uh, well, basically, um, I, I, I had a, a faith crisis. Uh, like, uh, I had grown up my entire life uh, from a Lutheran background, very conservative, very fundamental. And like... Like I believed in God, but like I just never felt God. And um, just with my personality, it's like, you know, I'm Mr. Loyal. Like I was trying to see everything through because like I thought that, you know, if I did everything right, if I, you know, didn't drink, if I didn't do drugs, if I didn't uh, have sex, if I didn't do anything that would be considered bad, sinful, like lo and behold, God would just bless me with everything I ever wanted. You know, the perfect wife, the perfect job, perfect everything. And that just never happened. And at one point, it's like after 30 years, I had been going to the same church. Like I just felt very spiritually dry. Like just things were not going the way that I thought that they would be. So, um, but uh, oh, sorry, my phone's going off. And no problem. Well, this is while you're adjusting your phone. I think it's important that yeah. we also talk about the church that you grew up in, which is, you know, there's many different branches of Lutheranism. Of course, I had Dr. Jordan Cooper on, who's a yeah. conservative, you know, evangelical type, uh, you know, uh, Lutheran church, more, you know, literal and stuff. But you actually belong to a group that was called, uh, was the, was referred to shorthandedly as the Wisconsin Synod or the mm -hmm. uh, Wisconsin Evangelical uh, Lutheran um synod and yep. uh, that's a very very conservative like you said very much a fundamentalist group that basically could be categorized as a high demand religion and and fancies itself as the one true church on earth yeah yeah and like uh i think i it's like like i grew up in it i was born into it like i was baptized three weeks old and one thing that uh, i i just remember that just kept snowballing in my head was like I, I was an usher and like I gave a bulletin to uh, an older gentleman, came in with his wife, just dressed really nicely. And he got talking with uh, our pastor back then. And like, I, I remember, I just remember seeing this gentleman just pointing at the bulletin that I gave him, pointing at the back regarding our closed communion. And they kind of got into a quiet argument. And I, at the time, 
like, you know, I was just kind of like painting a, a smile on my face, you know, everything's okay as I was handing out more bulletins to people coming in. And I just remember that gentleman took the hand of his wife and then they just walked out. And at the time, and it's not very Christ-like, I, I just remember it's like, well, good riddance. Like if you don't agree with our church, you know, see you later. And it took me a while to kind of realize, wait a minute, that is not how I should be responding to that. And over time, like I almost kind of had a little bit of a deconstruction going on in my head where that, that just kept replaying in my head in terms of, you know, what, what our fundamentalist beliefs were all about. And that kind of got the ball rolling in terms of, um, you know, leaving that church, but then at the same time, leaving that, like, where do you start over? Like, you're at ground zero from a spiritual aspect. You know, um, and this is what I think is so fascinating is because one of the reasons I had you on, of course, is because you did, uh, you visited um, the Mormon church, Church of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ of Latter-day Saints. And yeah. of course, you've also engaged people, um, a lot of Mormons now uh, have reached mm -hmm. out to you. And I find that to be a fascinating thing. So I, I just want to, we're going to talk about those episodes, but I want to get back to uh, your story because um, did you, did, what, what, did things go to a head like with, with your church? Like eventually what happened with you and the, the church that you grew up in and was baptized? In? Yeah. So uh, like my church attendance, again, like I kind of mentioned where it's like, I believe God, I just didn't feel God. And I kind of found myself just not going to church as much. And like, I was basically like, I was a millennial. I was turning into a statistic where like, I just wasn't showing up to church. And, um, you know, I was on like the only fellowship that I got, like I was on like uh, our church softball team at the time. And uh, like, I, I made a big error in the game. And I remember I just, you know, slammed my glove down. Like usually like I'm water off a duck's back, not a whole lot gets to me. Uh, but I created a scene and uh, the pastor basically told me where it's like, yeah, if you, if you don't stop, if you stop going to church, if you don't come back to church, like you're off the team. And I just remember where it's just like, I don't think I can come back to this church after just how much that I've seen. And so I kind of, for a little while, I was kind of going on that spiritual, but not religious path. And that just didn't really work for me. And like I was, I was improving when it came to physically, mentally, intellectually, but when it came to spiritually, I had nothing. And I just felt, I don't know if you want to call it God, I don't know what you want to call it, but I just had this whisper where it's like, do I want to leave the church? Do I want to leave God? Do I want to leave religion? Or maybe what I should do is just go all in and I'll just try it and date a new church each week and see what happens. So that's kind of where the 52 churches in 52 weeks got it started. Yeah, and that's what you had said, like you 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 had a breakup almost and you started dating other churches, like you just mm -hmm. checked out a, a new one every week. So yeah. before you, so you decide you're gonna go visit these churches, did you have the idea that you were going to be doing the vlog and doing the book or did it just kind of organically come out of that? It, uh, it all kind of, kind of had, came at a head one night. Um, kind of like I was I was date I was going through a string of bad first dates at the time and it's uh like I, I was going out with Christian women but they were like in different cities they were from different denominations like Catholic four square Pentecostal and it's like I didn't know anything about these other churches and I remember I had one date and things were going really really well but then all of a sudden we got to talking about church and she loved her church, but for me, it's like, I was, I was lying through my teeth. It's like, oh yeah, I love my church. It's fantastic. And it's like, I hadn't been kind of gone for, you know, six, seven months. And I, at that point I was already done with it. So I was talking to my best friend at the time and he was the complete opposite of me. He was very atheist. He was very um, different than who I was from a background standpoint, just complete opposites. And with my toddler weak faith at the time where I would try and convert him and just be like, all you need to do is believe. And I just wave my magic jazz hands to kind of be like, you know, all you got to do is believe. You just have to 
just really try really hard. And that never worked. And he would kind of show me different type of atheists. Uh, Bill Maher, I remember, was one video that he, documentary that he had me watch. And we would just continually keep butting heads about it. And I told him about the 52 churches in 52 weeks idea. And he's like, yeah, I, I would be interested in that. I'd read that. So it's like, all right. So next morning, uh, and I, there was the same, I think it was like the same weekend that Mark Driscoll's Mars Hill mega church broke up. <laughs> I knew nothing about it at the time, but that's like the very next morning I went and just started. I was just like, all right, we'll see what happens here. Oh, so you actually went to the Mars Hills Church right after? No, was... no, no. I just went to the, the closest church the next morning. Oh, okay. Just within walking distance. Got it. So, so what was the first church you visited? Uh, so I started off easy. Uh, so I went to an ELCA Lutheran church. All right. And I remember thinking, because they did open communion that Sunday, where they invited everyone up. And I'm like, I can't go up. And that's I, the... I was so used to closed communion. And that's the more liberal Lutheran church, which Katie Langston, um, a previous guest of mine, is a minister, and so they have also a female ordination, and they're 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 quite quite a bit liberal, but they are still yeah. Lutheran. Yeah, exactly. So um, you go to a Lutheran church, you experience that it's a progressive one, whatever. But then mm -hmm. what what was uh what were as the weeks went by, did you start going to churches that were quite a bit different, that were uh, maybe you thought was a little weird? What was your first weird or uh, like where you felt like an outsider experience attending a different church? Uh, let's see. The first, I did Christian science pretty early on. Okay. And that was different. But like it didn't really hit until week 12 at that time. Because uh, I drove out to uh, Minneapolis to uh, Fort Snelling Memorial Chapel. And that was interesting because it was a church for veterans. So I got in there and uh, the usher told me where it's like on the right side uh, is where everyone that's handicapped is. So you can't walk up for communion, but if you go on the left side, you can. And it was fascinating because like I drove there three hours, went to the church service. It was absolutely fantastic because of just all these these men that serve for the United States in the military just so passionate about Christ and I remember driving back and it's like I just drove six hours for church like who does that but at the same time I just remember where it kind of felt kind of like a spiritual adventure and that really kind of opened things up where it's like if I can drive six hours for this like, how far else can I drive? So then I started doing uh, mega churches, you know, with Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, Rick Warren. Like, I was very fascinated by that culture. Um, I tried some other strange churches like Scientology. Um, and that was, that was very different. Uh, but then also did some niche churches where they would kind of take one uh, cultural aspect and merge that into church. So there'd be churches where they would merge heavy metal rock music with church. One church would do professional wrestling events. Um, another, like I attended an abbey where the monks brewed beer. It was just, the more that I learned, the more interested I wanted to kind of find out what was out there. Let me see the copy of the book. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like this, um, okay. have it on Amazon. And so a lot of these pictures, it's like, yeah, these are the actual churches that I took pictures of when I visited. Okay. And uh, that, how, and, and how long ago did that book come out? Uh, so when I did 52 and 52 the first time, it was about seven years ago. Okay. Um, I didn't know how hard it'd be to edit, write, write, and edit everything. So like it didn't come out until, uh, I want to say 20, 2018. Okay. Yeah. Oh, four years ago. Okay, so you you published the book. So, folks, I'm going to leave a link in the description for those of you who'd like to check out the book. Um, that's that's a really cool thing. And so, now, what made you decide that you were going to make your book and do like a YouTube version of your book? What made you decide to do that? Uh, pandemic. So during the pandemic, I was bored, and I decided, you know what? And I'm I'm an introvert. Like that's the entire reason I wrote a book in the first place. I don't want to. I don't like the limelight. I don't want to be 
talking out loud, like it's not my element, but like I couldn't stop talking about 52 churches in 52 weeks, even years later. So I started the YouTube channel and just kind of figured, all right, well, I'll talk about some of these past church experiences because they were interesting to me. But then over time, I'm just kind of like, like I've been talking about this stuff and this was seven years ago. And I had a couple things happen to me where it's like, let's just, let's just make this a travel vlog. Let's just make it a travel church vlog and see what happens a second time. So, so some of these churches that you are visiting um, for the YouTube channel, are these, are some of these churches, churches that you previously visited when, for the book as well? No, no, I'm trying to do all the churches that are brand new. Oh, so some, some of the denominations I may have visited in the first book where I'm just curious to visit it a second time. Uh, but for the most part, these are, like, I just want to visit a new church each week which kind of brings up my visit with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yes, and let's talk about that. Now, I, I, did, you, yeah. did you visit an LDS church when you wrote the book originally, or was your first experience when you did the YouTube channel? No, I, I didn't. I didn't know anything about LDS <laughs> doing this the first time. And this is where my first foray, when it came to Mormon culture, when it came to Latter-day Saints, like I had done this entire book, 300 pages, visiting all these different type of churches. And I had no clue about who Joseph Smith was, who Moroni was, the book of, like I knew, I had heard of the Book of Mormon, but I didn't know anything other than just basics kind of stuff of Utah, Mitt Romney and BYU. That's like- Pretty much it. Pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's what I found. So this is what really, so just so you know, folks, like he's, he's you got your, your channels growing. Uh, your most viewed videos actually about your foray with the Sci Scientologist, but then your second and third most viewed videos are about the your attending a church, Jesus Christ Latter Day Saints. And what makes the story so yeah. unique is it's one of the few churches you actually, or maybe the only church that you made a point to visit twice while you're doing this endeavor. Yeah, and that's what really caught my attention. Now, this is what I really like. Now, first of all, folks, I mean, and I should have probably said this earlier, but. Mm -hmm you don't really know anything about these churches that you've never been to before. So you literally went to a Seventh-day Adventist church on a Sunday morning, <laughs> not knowing that they worship on know. Saturday. That's, uh, as soon as you, I saw you say that, I was like, I got to get this guy on my show, you know? Yeah. But So you go in there literally not knowing anything about the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, the Golden Plates. So you're visiting this church service and you're hearing this stuff for the first time. Now, of course, you experienced mm -hmm. the service and then a lot of this stuff was probably told to you after the service. So why don't you tell us about that first Church of Jesus Christ, a Latter-day Saints service that you attended. Yeah. So, so when I when I wrote when I finished up the first fifty-two churches in fifty-two weeks, like I made a post to all my friends on Facebook, and like I told them all the different denominations I had visited: Catholic, Lutheran, Methodist, Christian Science, Scientology, Quaker, Greek Orthodox. I listed all these different ones out, and I had one friend who was like, "Did you visit the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints?" And I'm like no what's what's special about that because she came from an lds church i just had no idea so when i was doing the 52 churches in 52 weeks a second time i kind of made it made it a point to visit based off her comment to go to an lds church early on so i didn't know anything so the night before i visited um like i i did a real quick search just to figure out what i was going to wear and what time it was and when you do a Google search as a newcomer to an LDS church, you don't see service times. So you have to go on to the actual LDS website to figure it out. So I couldn't find it. But based off the YouTube video I viewed that was made like four or five years ago, they told me it was at 9 a.m. Great. So I drove out there and I got there and all I did was a quick crash course I think I typed in Mormon church in the search engine. And then all of a sudden I start, as I'm driving, I'm learning about, I'm hearing the name Joseph Smith for the first time in my life. I'm learning a little bit about this angel called Moroni. And I didn't have any idea how to pronounce the name correctly mm -hmm. in my video when I first am recording there. Um, and it, golden plates and just all this different stuff. And I'm just like, what am I walking into here? I have no clue. 
so like in my first video, it's like, that's literally me an hour after learning about some of this stuff before I walk into my first LDS church. And looking back at it, now that I kind of know a little bit more about it, it's like, oh my goodness, like I was clueless. I like, I'm, because I don't know anything, like I keep saying Mormon church, Mormon mm -hmm. church, Mormon church. <laughs> and as I'm talking to people in the church, it's like, they're inviting me. It's like, oh yeah, this is my first time in a Mormon church. And like, they had to clarify, no, no, like we usually go by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So I was learning completely naive in terms of what I was walking into that day. And, and so you, you posted, now let me ask you a question. Did you post yeah. that video before you visited it for the second, uh, visited another LDS church the second time? Yeah, I usually will do the church visit and then usually um, I'll do some quick edits and then I usually will post it maybe about three days, two, three days oh. later. Quick turnaround. Sometimes, sometimes maybe a week, but okay. I usually get them out really fast. So I want to get, I want you to talk about the reactions you got from people because you get a lot of views, which is interesting, but just tell me your impressions of, because you talk about it in your video, but just kind of give an yeah. overall impressions of that first service that you attended and your, inter so, in your interactions yeah. with the people. Um, so when I first got there, like I, the, the previous video that I watched from like five years ago, they said it was at nine and the service was actually at 10. So I was actually way early from what I needed to be that morning. But like the first reaction I had is I was walking around the hallways and this is where I saw like portraits of Joseph Smith being approached by, I think it's God, the father and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. First vision. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I saw another portrait of like Jesus in the Americas and stuff. And I'm just like looking at this stuff, like, where am I? Like, it was like a twilight zone to me. Like I had spent that entire year doing the first 52 churches in 52 weeks. Like I learned so much from that, but I had no idea how different Latter-day Saints, LDS, Joseph Smith, how different it was. So part of me also was just like, how did I not know about this? Just never knew about it because I, I think with like Protestant Christians, the other the typical type of christian bubble it's like it, it kind of keeps out lds so much so even though i was exploring in the past like i still hadn't hadn't known this stuff before uh but when it came to the people um i i had heard and i don't know where it happened i had heard like mormons lds were very friendly and i had uh, one lady approach me very kind and then it wasn't until like another gentleman approached me who really got, who really got talking to me and just great guy talked all kinds of different stuff. And he was, and he, after service, he came back to talk to me, he even tried to find me a book of Mormon. And that's when the elders, that's when the missionaries approached me. And that was fascinating because I had never been in a church service before where they would answer all my questions. So like by far, when it came to that church experience, I never had felt more welcomed. I never had felt like people that were so convicted in their faith, because that's the thing that really stuck out to me when it came to the missionaries, is their conviction, their passion to, to spread the word of God, to spread the Book of Mormon. Um, that I really learned about. And that really just kind of piqued my interest where it's like, what did I walk into? Hmm. And what was it like when you're hearing? So this is the thing. You really haven't heard this origin story of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, originally called the Church of, Church of Christ. And yeah. you didn't really know anything about the Book of Mormon. What was it like hearing that stuff for the first time? Um, it, information overload. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I had so many questions. But it's almost like you don't know what questions to ask huh? because there's just so much happening. Uh, like, I, I remember one of my first questions is like, do you just call him Joe Smith? Like, to me, Joseph Smith was the most generic sounding name possible. And I think I saw a picture or a portrait of him. And it's like, this guy is way too good looking in this portrait to be a church founder. Like, I didn't understand that, <laughs> you know? So, um, <laughs> I just, as a newcomer, like I had some really silly questions, 
but I didn't, they were so kind and open to me where it's like, I felt like I could ask the silly questions or the dumb questions being completely oblivious and new to LDS. So yeah, it was just, it was a wild trip that day. <laughs> so, um, so you post the video. Yeah. And what kind of responses do you get from people? So um, it's been interesting. Um, I've never seen so much, so much love, so much kindness from a church body before, um, especially when it comes to LDS. I also get another category where it's, it's ex-Mormons. It's people that have left the church. And so I have several people on one side welcoming, who are welcoming me in there. They want me to read the Book of Mormon. They're giving me encouragement. They're giving me testimonies. Just really, really encouraging, positive words. The other side is giving me warnings and, you know, run as far away as possible. It's coming from ex-Mormons that have been hurt in the past. So I'm in this kind of like tug of war from a social media aspect. And it's very strange. But at the same time, like I can understand it for people that are being converted into the church because like, I'm sure it's that way when it comes to families, um, if people start talking about that too. So it's just a very, it's a very unique situation. Hmm. And uh, what kind of comments were you getting that kind of surprised you or uh, made you think like, oh, I think I might have like... Like early, you probably were thinking like, oh, this is getting a lot of views and getting a lot of comments. I'm, I think I'm onto something here. What, what, what was it that kind of did that for you? Yeah. Oh, boy. I don't think anything in particular with like one, one comment or so. Um, but it, it's been fascinating just to see the amount of people reaching out, not just through YouTube, but have actually reached out to me personally through Facebook, Instagram, social media type of accounts. and. I've been forming friendships through that, not just from LDS members, but also from ex-Mormons as well. So it, it's, again, it's just very strange because like I'm walking into a world where I've had so much experience with all these other churches in the past, but then I come into LDS and it's just a completely different experience, not from like an like a setting or an atmosphere type of vibe to it, but just from an overall um, personality standpoint, from people that actually want to create relationship with you, that I'm not, I'm not accustomed to that in the typical American church that you have nowadays, because that's where the, the follow-up, especially with the missionaries, was just so, so amazing to me. Like you don't get that with other type of churches. Yeah, and they hear that evangelicals. And you've been to a ton of churches, over probably a hundred different churches, and you you experience something much more different than you experience from many many Christian churches. What does that tell you? So, um, one of the things when I did the first fifty two and fifty two um, that was so fascinating to me is like I would have, and I didn't do this intentionally; it just kind of happened. Is I would have like almost like side projects. So if I went to a church the first time, I would always leave my contact information just to kind of see what the follow-up was like. So uh, again, when it comes to visiting a church for the first time, it, again, it's kind of like dating. Like at first you have to, with a lot of these churches, like you, you create your website, you attract whoever is coming into your church, and then you have your date, you have your church service, and then you need to follow up so you can create a second date create that type of relationship because after all like as a church you're trying to help your congregants you're trying to help those people create a relationship with jesus christ what i found when i left my contact information is a lot of churches and this is where i was shocked by is they would take it and then they would do nothing with it so it's like do you want me to come back I was shocked at the, and then I, there were some other churches where they would take months to respond. 
so if you're if you go out on a date with somebody and they don't message you back until two months later are you going to go out on a second date Mm. like no so the ones that i was most impressed with when it came to the follow-up were usually the smaller churches where you get a handwritten letter from the pastor a lot after the pandemic what i've noticed is a lot of churches they usually kind of leave it to the church secretary send you an email here's some programs to get set up if you want to join the church and that's about it what was interesting with lds is the missionaries continually followed up and that was really refreshing just to see because i never got that from an evangelical church before and the the missionaries i spoke with it was in madison wisconsin they passed me off to sisters uh, from where where i live now and they're continually following up with me they're texting me they're they're sharing gospel um, they're sharing scripture from the book of mormon with me and um it's been so and it's like I'm, i'm not going into this project to be converted like i feel like i'm very stern in my own faith and beliefs where i don't feel like i'm going to change but at the same time like i want to be friendly i want to be open i want to under and especially with lds after my visits i want to understand more i'm very curious to not judge to not be like simon peter and take a dagger out and splice off the ears of other type of churches and religions let me hear you out let me hear what you have to say and and that's with follow up with LDS, um, that's something I don't think it's brought up very often. But by far, like there's definitely value there. There's something there to really spread the message. So part of this journey that you're on, because I want to then continue with your story because you visit a second time. But mm-hmm. I also think this might be a good time to start talking about how you know you've gone through some trauma, um, mm-hmm. spiritual abuse. Um, you were excommunicated from a high demand church. Um, you've had experiences of PTSD with bad relationship, a bad relationship. And, and, and the thing is, is I'm, I'm bringing this up because you talk about this on your channel and yeah. it feels like you are on a journey of, of, of trying to, you're on a spiritual journey, but you're also on a journey of, of like healing. You're trying to um, you know, this is this is this is actually co- kind of contributing to maybe the healing process of some of the trauma that you've gone through, uh, that have involved individuals in your life, but also church in your life as well. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's when you go to church, um, you're bringing in your burdens. You're bringing like because when you are at church and you see those stained glass windows, they can almost act like a microscope into your life and your sins and your background and what you've been through. And, you know, there's so much value that the Bible has to bring forward to that. Because like, if you go through, and everybody's different. I know for me, like when I went through my own uh, trauma, like you, like for me personally, and again, this isn't for everybody, but like when I hit rock bottom, like, where else do you go you can only go you can only go up and that's where christ that's where spirituality that's where if you suffer as i think young would say an ego death like that's where the christian message really hits home because the bible isn't a textbook it's not some science book it's it's story it's it's about spirituality it's about something more and uh at, at the end of the book one thing that i took away from that was like the Christian life is one of death and resurrection because like when a part of you dies, like you can rise and live again. And I, I know, and with this current 52 churches in 52 weeks, like I just want to focus on the churches this time. I didn't want it to be about me, but I've had certain things happen with different types of spiritual mysteries where I can't explain it. Maybe I'm more spiritually attuned. I don't know where it just, coincidences happen where it's like i can't help but not bring in a personal aspect a personal history to some of my videos because that's what's talking to me in that church for that day you know Mm -hmm. 
you know, that's the thing. And I want to continue their story because this is just interesting because one of the things that happened to me early on was the intent of my channel was to be a more scholarly, secular channel. Mm -hmm. But even before I filmed my first episode, some spiritual things happened that showed me it's going to, that also the spiritual at times will enter into the conversation. And that what makes yeah. my channel so different is that I let it come into the picture too. Um, and I think that's important that we are open to that. I, I, I primarily want to do a secular scholarly program, but it, man, if the Holy Ghost shows up, I don't want to tamp, them, tamp it down either. Um, yeah. And that's, that's the thing that I thought, oh, of course, if I'm going to be going and engaging these people who believe in Jesus, believe in the Holy Ghost, and I engage all these other groups that are also Book of Mormon believing churches that are not necessarily the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints, I keep on running into Christians. That was, whoa, you know, <laughs> that, mm. that's the surprising okay. thing, right? Um, and it, it's this, this, my channel has also been a spiritual journey. And what I really appreciate about you is because I don't really talk about myself on my channel, but I think it's really cool because you're kind of giving this, you're, you're telling a story, you're traveling, uh, you're going to different places. It's, 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 it's exploration. It's, it's engaging people uh, that you really don't know anything about their church or anything like that. And what you've, and what I like about your program is that you'll, you'll be critical of a church service. It's not like everything's hunky dory. If you didn't care for something that happened in a church service, you're going to mention it. But yeah. you you experienced all these things, and so this this now becomes a more than just a travel log where you travel to different places, but also becomes part of your story. It literally is affecting you on a spiritual level because spiritual things are happening to you. And I'd like for you maybe to share some of that with yeah. the audience to, so they can understand the context of what what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, uh, the the most the one that's been most curious has been uh, the involvement of cardinals. And, or Cardinal um, Red for you, bud. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, like, and again, I, I don't like to get too much into the personal because it's like, you know, I have people in my past, I don't want to be um, stirring up anything. Um, but, like, I've, I've had this strange coincidences with Cardinals. And, uh, and I, I don't know if even if I've been able to kind of communicate effectively in terms of what happened because with this second 52 churches in 52 weeks, like it all stemmed with the symbolism of cardinals from a past relationship that I had been involved with. And uh, like, it was, it was very serious. I was looking to move, but the, and what was funny is like in the beginning of the relationship, um, like the symbolism was cardinals. Like one of the early dates, we did a painting with cardinals, um, you know, Christmas gift with cardinals, uh, home decor items with cardinals. And that relationship ended. Uh, out of the blue, like even my intuition was like, sorry, I had no idea that was coming. And like, I don't get in Gethsemane prayer stance very often. Uh, but like, you know, I'm asking God, you know, the night of that, that ending where it's like, all right, what's your will for me? What do I do next? And um, the next morning, like I'm walking to my Jeep and lo and behold, like a cardinal appeared on the branch above me, just random coincidence but it was just so strange and i took a picture of it just because the symbolism um well then like a week later um the like with that past relationship i was looking to move but the the reason i couldn't move was because i had a tree that had fallen in my backyard out here um in the middle of the winter so i couldn't get rid of it during the winter and i was trying to figure out how to get rid of it and like the weekend before, like I was talking, like it wasn't even my tree, it was my other neighbors. And I'm talking with this neighbor, trying to figure it out, meet a new neighbor. We get talking about it. And she said that her husband, you know, hey, maybe, maybe you could get rid of it. It's like, this is a huge project. Like you don't need to do that. But I still remember Monday, April 25th, like I get home from work, the Cardinals back in my backyard try and take some pictures. I get back in the backyard, the tree's gone. It's almost like I was starting over at square one. Hmm. So then Saturday, April 30th happened. I couldn't get to sleep. I'm like, what, what to do now? Like, I'm not moving. I don't have to worry about this big project with this tree in my backyard. I'll do 52 churches in 52 weeks again. Hmm. And, um, so week nine, that's when I went to my first LDS church. 
And there were, I had picked out two in Madison and I went to one, I took some pictures and I, I changed my mind. I never changed my mind where I visit the church, but that morning I did. So I decided to go to the other Madison LDS ward. And again, two cardinals whistle by and it just seems seem so weird. So I've had, I've had cardinals kind of popping up now in my spiritual journey with this new 52 and 52. And even this past uh, weekend, um, I went to a Viking church, a stave church. And it was out in uh, an island in Wisconsin. I, I like, I just have to see this. And I'm going to post this video sometime this week. And I'm walking in there. And sure enough, a carnal is just standing, almost waiting for me on one of the benches right in front of this church. And I'm just like, I don't know what else to do. Like, this is, the coincidences just keep popping up. And like, I have, again, two camps from a comment section where it's like, some people are like, yeah, this is a spiritual, spiritual messenger. It's like, when you read the Bible, there's a lot of, like, even day five in Genesis is devoted to birds and sea creatures. You got Simon Peter with uh, the rooster crowing three times. You have Noah and the dove. You have John the Baptist and Jesus said in Jordan with the dove. Elijah and ravens. But then you have another side where it's like, nah, this, is, this isn't biblical. Like, you're reading too much into this. Hmm. Like, stop. Hmm. So as a viewer, I'm just kind of like, Here's what I'm seeing. You decide. It's really weird to me. I don't know what it means. Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but it's just strange. That's interesting. And so, um, um, do do you uh, do you feel like that, that this there is something really truly to this whole cardinal thing? I mean, do you, is it gotten to the point now where it's just it's uh, too obvious to you, or do you, or is there a part of you that's still a skeptic about it? I'm still skeptical about it because what, what's the end game? What's the end point of it? I don't know. Um, because like, again, like I drew, I grew up in a very conservative fundamental type of church. Like the first time I ever went to like a Pentecostal or assemblies of God church, I'm just like, what are you people doing? Like you need to be, you need to be quiet. Like this is too much. Um, so like, I never believed in spiritual gifts. I never believed in, you know, raising your hands up for worship or anything like that. Um, so then I start doing this. I keep seeing these coincidences. Like it just keeps happening to me. And it's just, I don't know what to make of it. It's yeah. curious. I'm fascinated by it. That is interesting. And then of it's course, just, I have an inner skeptic that thinks a lot of things, but I think it's interesting yeah. to hear the story. Maybe folks, you can comment in the, uh, comments, uh, make a comment and just let us know what your, your thoughts are on, on that. Um, yeah. What made you decide to attend a second service, which is unprecedented for what you do, to attend yeah. a second Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint service? Uh, two reasons. So first off, um, the week before, um, I was recovering from illness, and I wasn't sure if I had COVID or not. So, so it's like, I don't want to put anyone in danger doing this because I'm going to so many different churches. So like you, you can get sick easily. Um, so I had to do like a workaround and uh, decided to do um, this outdoor scenic walking trail that was sponsored by a church. I figured this would be close enough. And like, it was a disaster. Like it, it was like a bunch of flies the most aggressive flies that I'd ever been in my life. It was like going through an Egyptian plague, just walking through there. And I had to get out of there. And, I, and like, as I'm leaving, like I'm doing my YouTube videos. I have no idea what to talk about. Like, what am I going to talk about? I just had a bunch of flies in my face the entire time. And as I'm leaving, then another cardinal appeared. And I tried to get my camera out and I couldn't get the visual. And all I remember is, okay, that's the fourth sighting. The third sighting was when I was going in between LDS wards in Madison. And I'm just like, all right, I'll check out another Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But at the same time, like, I almost kind of felt like the sisters, the missionaries, the elders, just due to their amazing follow-up, maybe I should, maybe I should do something with that. And decided, you know what, let's, let's give it a shot. So 
went there again to a second LDS type of church service. Well, and this is the thing that really struck me because I, you know, I can say it's interesting because I grew up in a fairly conservative background as well. And, but also charismatic. So we're open to the idea of mm-hmm. experiencing the gifts and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. um, you kind of had a spiritual experience attending the second service. Yeah. I, I just want you to talk through that. I want you to explain to the audience what happened and how you're processing that. Yeah. So like when I was going again, like I, I'm having all these carnal coincidences, but the entire reason I didn't want to go to that LDS ward in the first place was because um, like uh, I had a Delilah from my past um, who had gone in a car accident just outside that ward. And um, I didn't want to revisit that because it's in the past. And it's like, I don't want to be bringing up that kind of stuff. And again, this is where the personal journey comes in. This is where the past meets the present. And um, I had a, like with all the carnal coincidences, I was just kind of like, why am I back here? Like, I, I never want to be back in this parking lot again. And I, I had a feeling, and I was kind of telling myself in the video, it's like, nope, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. But inside, I kind of knew something's going to happen. And I was very curious about what the talk was going to be. And uh, the member talked about uh, two missionaries in a hot air balloon. And in the video, I kind of mentioned, okay, the hot air balloon is very symbolic in my past when it comes to my past trauma, when it comes to, I wouldn't say like I had a full out PTSD, but I had remnants of it. I had a very, I had some, some aspects of it. And like the hot air balloon was symbolic to one of the most traumatic nights of my life. So it's like, how does that happen? Like the only reason that I came to that ward was because of these carnal coincidences, because of the follow-up from missionaries. How does that happen? And I don't know what it means. I don't know why I need to revisit that. Maybe it's to help out other people when it comes to narcissistic abuse, when it comes to um, that kind of spiritual abuse at the same point. Um, So in that video with what's been happening with my own personal journey, it's like, all right, I'm just going to let it out. We'll see what God does with it. So that's a little bit about what happened for that visit. Um, so now, uh, what do we do with this? Um, because evangelicals uh, and conservative Christians um, are taught that the Church of mm-hmm. Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a cult, mm-hmm. and it's not Christian. Um, what, what do you have to say to people who make that statement? What are your thoughts on that? Um, like I had heard that in the past. And again, like I didn't know much about LDS or anything like that in the past. Um, it, it's difficult to hear nowadays just because like having attended two services after meeting with the missionaries, like when it comes to the Book of Mormon, when it comes to that, because to me, it was so strange to me because I always wondered as a Protestant and as a writer, like what would happen? How blasphemous would it be? if someone came along and wrote like a third book, a third Testament. And I was just always like, no one would ever do that. But then you hear, but then when I learned about Joseph Smith, the restoration, the book of Mormon, like it was like, holy moly, like someone actually has done this. And not only that, but there's just so much rich history behind it. So I'm meeting I'm I'm talking with missionaries. I'm talking with elders. I'm talking with sisters. I'm I'm face to face because when you le- look eye to eye to somebody, like it does something differently. Because in today's day, like everyone hides behind their their laptop, their phone. They can type whatever negative comments that they want. It's so easy nowadays to just label and use one words like Nazi, rumor, racist, cult. And just throw those words out like crazy just to drive home a point. But like when I actually visited LDS, it changed, it changed my perspective. So even though I may not agree 
theologically right now. I want to learn more just because I'm very curious about the whole story. And, and I think that as we talked about uh, the other night, like LDS Mormons, like they made the desert bloom. Like they made it happen. How do you take state of Utah? How do you become all these pioneers? Like you see the fruits, you see the passion. And, and again, that's, that's where I'm as a Protestant, as, as a lifetime Protestant, it's, it, it really has kind of opened my eyes and made me kind of reconsider, okay, what's going on here? Because I didn't know anything walking in. How do we, how can we be allies? Mm. So interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I, uh, I think that, you know, I've learned a lot here too, because you know, I, I, you and I are, are on, on a similar journey. We we took two different opposite things. I came in at knowing everything, if you will, and not everything, but a lot. Yeah. And you yeah. came in not knowing hardly anything. And it's interesting that when you go in with an open heart and an open mind, and you're not there to proselytize, or you or you think you already have the answers and you're going to show them, mm -hmm. um, this is what other Christians don't get to see. Because they're showing us they're, they're letting their guard down because they feel comfortable talking to us because they can yeah. tell that we're not there to tear down or bash, make fun of, make light of, but to genuinely talk to these people and, and, and hear their stories. And I'll tell you folks, evangelicals out there, if you take that approach, um, I think you will be much more fruitful in having actual positive dialogue with members of a church that's different than your own. And this can go for other churches yeah. too, but especially the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. After the first 52 churches in 52 weeks, like I kind of aligned more on kind of more reformed theology. Oh, yeah, that's you know, right. Think, yeah. think of, you know, Tim Keller and Alistair Begg and uh, maybe even like John MacArthur, Charles Spurgeon kind of types. But as I, as I engaged in that type of community, it was just so it was so easy. And I kind of used this analogy earlier where everyone wants to be Simon Peter, take out the dagger, cut off the ear of the Roman soldier. It's like, how's a Roman soldier supposed to hear the word of God in the gospel if his ears are cut off? Like, let me listen to you. Let's have conversation. Let's have some dialogue. Um, I think that goes a lot further than uh, just, you know, putting up the defenses and just getting in some type of verbal argument. Yeah. Amen to that, dude. I, I, I agree yeah. with that entirely. You know, um, how many, what church number are you at now for the YouTube channel? Uh, so let's see, I just finished up week 22 this past weekend. So, and that's the Viking church, the Viking, well, the stave church, because as I learned, and, and this is again, where it's so fascinating because like, this, it's almost like speed dating. It's like, you're learning so much about these churches where I don't really have a whole lot of time to dive into it. But at the same time, it's like a, like I, that's on purpose. Like I want to understand what it's like to a newcomer. So it, it's fascinating with these stave churches because it represents an interesting time in Scandinavia and Norway from a thousand years ago because they believed in Odin, Thor, Loki, all these pagan gods. But what changed for Scandinavia, what changed for Norway was the use of missionaries. So the missionaries were, again, this is where I'm learning stuff. So the missionaries were able to get to Olaf the first, not Olaf from Frozen, but Olaf of Norway. And then they were able to convert also his, his I think his son, Olaf the second. So when you look at the symbolism and how everything is constructed, you can, the stave churches are an interesting time period because you see Christianity overtaking and merging with that Norse type of culture. Hmm. So you have dragons acting as these grotesques outside the church to thwart off and scare off demons and dark spirits. Okay. It's so interesting. And at the same time, like the churches are built like a fortress. Wow. Because you never know back in those days if you might be ransacked or pillaged <laughs> or something. Wow. It's so interesting. Well, this is so cool, the stuff you're doing. Now, I, I do want to make a couple of recommendations. Now, you may, yes, I don't know if you'll yes. be able to do it for this series, but um, I definitely think you should also check out the Community of Christ. 
which is the second largest branch in the restoration. I also think you should also check out the Church of Jesus Christ, also known as the Bickertonites. Uh, they're the, I call them like the Pentecostal Mormons. Um, they're, they're awesome. So I see if they have a Wisconsin um, uh, uh, congregation. I think they do have, they have some congregations in the Midwest. I know they have yeah, one in I, South Bend. And I don't limit it to Wisconsin. If I can yeah. make a drive for a weekend, it's like I can visit some Midwest states. Yeah. Um, like I, I drove out to Missouri last weekend, so yeah. Ohio the weekend before that. So yeah, yeah I know there's a there's a yeah. congregation in South Bend, Indiana, and I think there might be one in Chicago. So I, I but you can yeah. go to Church of Jesus Christ and uh, check the, them out. And the other group yeah. that I think you definitely need to check out is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, but it does <laughs> it's, it's non hyphenated and it's a capital D. And that is the uh, church. It's there. They have a congregation, I believe, in Burlington, Wisconsin. And it was founded by a prophet by the name of James Strang. And this is a book that was just given to me by the author, the latest book, God Has Made Us a Kingdom, James Strang and the Midwest Mormons. And um, they have a congregation in uh, Wisconsin. And so uh, that's been the funnest part of this channel is engaging all the different branches of the restoration. And some of the smaller ones are the more some of the more fascinating ones. So yeah. I, I would say maybe check out some of those churches too if you make your way out and about. I do I do have some plans. So yeah, I'm very curious. And it, it's strange because like I'm on week 22. This thing goes fast. Yeah. It's like I'm already halfway through coming up within the next month. So it, That's yeah, great. we'll see what happens. So you basically your your schedule allows you to basically travel every weekend and, and do this, huh? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I, I just do it each weekend. So I try and like a few weekends ago, like I drove out to Ohio and that like 10 hours straight driving 10 hours back. Oh my. It, it's tiring. Oh boy. Wow. What an interesting project that you're doing. I think it's so cool. And I love your videos. I love your channel. I've watched quite a few of your videos. Um, you've been to Mennonite churches, you've been to Seventh-day Adventists, uh, of course, you went up, you finally got to one on a Saturday, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you've been to the two Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. I encourage you to continue this journey, my friend. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the program today, and I was wondering if you had any final words you'd like to share with the audience or anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to cover. Oh, boy. Well, uh, yeah, if you want to check out 52 churches in 52 weeks, I'm on, I'm on YouTube. So hit like and subscribe if you want to check that out. Um, but yeah, when it comes to my channel, like I'm not trying to, uh, you know, force anything on anybody. It's just part of it is just curiosity. Um, but at the same time, it's like, like I have to, I have to bring in myself into it as well. So I'm trying as best as I can to, to remove biases. It happens for a human, uh, but yeah, it's just fascinating just to kind of see what else is out there because one thing, um, and we, we go back to ELCA with Lutheran pastor, um, one that I took away from the first 52 and 52 was Nadia Bowles Weber. And uh, she, she's very, um, she's just tons of tattoos. And on her forearm is a tattoo of Mary Magdalene. And the way that she explained her was she, she terms her as a patroness saint of just showing up. Because when you look in the scripture, when you look in the gospels, it's Mary Magdalene who just keeps showing up. And when Jesus Christ resurrected from the grave, who was the first one that showed up? Mary Magdalene. And she essentially became the first I don't know if you want to say preacher, but the first person that let everyone know that he had risen. And I, I think with the 52 churches in 52 weeks, I try and just show up and see what happens. And you never, it, it's, you never know what you're going to bump into. You don't know who you're going to talk to. Um, it's just, it's very curious. It's just very interesting and you just never know what's going to happen. Well, I do have a quick question. Have you yeah. had the chance to read through any of the Book of Mormon yet? I've read a little bit of it. Okay. So uh, I've been working with uh, the sisters from my local ward with just various questions. And they've been fantastic. And I, I ask a lot of stupid questions just because I'm, I'm curious about it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've read a little bit that they've recommended different type of passages from it. And again, as, as a lifetime Protestant, it is so difficult to... To, to change your, your views that you've grown up your entire life. And it just kind of really makes you realize 
um, like any type of conversion, whether it's Christianity, whether it's Mormonism, whatever it is, like that's truly a miracle. Hmm. So hmm. interesting, interesting stuff, dude. Well, David Boyce, uh, 52 churches in 52 weeks. Why don't you show that book one more time for the audience? <laughs> sure. And uh, I'm going to leave happen. a link in the description. So if you want to check out the book and I, I have people that buy like every single book uh, that I have on my program. Um, oh, so, so you might get a couple sales out of this as well. And um, I want to thank you so much for coming on because it was, it's interesting stuff that you're doing. I want you to keep us posted. Um, so sure. if you think that you want to give us an update to the audience about maybe any further engagement with any other restorationist churches or the church, of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, we could have you back on for that. Uh, yeah. Sir, thank you so much. And you all have yourself a great day. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification button for when a new video comes out. Also, if you want to support the channel, down in the description, there will be places to su support me on uh, the channel on uh, PayPal as well as Patreon. And also don't forget the store, uh, our merch store, mormonbookreviews.com. And I want to show you, I just got this in the mail today. We also have mouse covers now too, or mouse things. So um, you can check out mormonbookreviews.com if you'd like to check out our merch store. We do appreciate all the people who are supporting our channel and we are working on getting caught up on the podcast as well. You all have yourself a great day.